Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, the doctrinal significance of uh, resurrection and what it means to us today. Uh, so that was uh, chapter 11. We completed chapter 11. Any of you have any questions? Any doubts? Anything that you'd like to add? Any thoughts on uh, chapter 11? This uh, silence. So what should I take the silence for? Did you all understand? Did you not understand? Are you all able to hear me? Yes, Pastor, we can go ahead. We'll go ahead, okay. Okay, so there are no questions. Nothing anyone wants to share. Anything you want me to explain again? No? Okay, if not, uh, we'll move on to chapter 12. Okay, if you know, uh, look at your notes, it's uh, basically just um, a few uh, uh, sentences there with, uh, uh, with a few scripture references. Uh, and it says at the end of that lesson, it says uh, that, uh, you know, uh, 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 that the end time events or the details of the return of uh, uh, Christ and his rule on the earth uh, will be uh, taught in the uh, course that is called as the end times. I think that is in your second uh, year. Uh, so here we're just going to basically very briefly look at the end time events. We also have uh, a chapter on this in doc doctoral foundations. So if you all really want to, uh, uh, you know, a more detailed study, then you can let me know. Uh, we could do that in uh, when we're doing it in Doctrinal Foundation. I think it's just going to be the next uh, chapter or uh, two more chapters, and then we will be doing about uh, uh, the end time events. Okay. So we talked about Christ's um, death, his uh, resurrection, his ascension to heaven, and that is not the end of. Uh, uh, you know, what God has for us, uh, you know, he has promised to uh, take us to be with him. He also has promised that Christ will return just the way he was uh, uh, taken up. Uh, the same Jesus will return again. And we read about this in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. So can one of you please read Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, please? Acts chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white uh, stood beside them. Yes, you can continue with uh, verse 11, please, Subhashish. A man of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up taken from you into heaven 
will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so when we see that uh, Jesus was taken up, the disciples are still looking, gazing, staring into uh, heaven and uh, the sky. And um, the two men, uh, the angels who stood there in white apparel, uh, they said the same Jesus who was taken up from heaven will also come in like manner. That means in the same way you saw him go into heaven. So Jesus will return uh, for his church, for his people uh, to take us to be with himself. And uh, we know that this is referred to as a rapture. And the rapture will take place uh, before the seven-year tribulation that uh, the people of the earth will face who are left behind. Uh, but those who believe in Christ Jesus will be raptured up and will not uh, go through that seven-year tribulation uh, period. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 13. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 and 18. So can each one of you read uh, these uh, verses, please? John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. And First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. John chapter 4. Yes, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Zilotoli. Okay. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Thank you. So here we see that uh, Christ will come again and receive uh, those who believe in him, and we will be with him where he is. Uh, thank you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. I read, In order to present the church to himself, in all its beauty, pure and faultlessness, without spot or wrinkle mm -hmm. or any other imperfection. Thank you. So when Christ returns, he will present us uh, uh, his glorious church uh, as people who are uh, holy, without blemish, uh, without any spot or wrinkle. Okay. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Can one of you read that, please? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come come down from heaven with a cloud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. Thank you. So Paul is talking about uh, the rapture and what's going to happen when Christ returns. He mentions about this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verses 13 to 18, uh, and how Christ will come and how those who are alive will 
uh, and those who are uh, will be caught up with uh, him in the clouds will meet the Lord in the air, and those who are also um, dead will rise first, and then those who are alive will also be caught up with him in uh, the air. They will meet Christ and will be with him. Okay, and uh, we know that um, after this, after the rapture happens, will be the seven-year uh, tribulation period. And uh, after the end of the tribulation period, we know that uh, Jesus will return back and he will establish his kingdom here, the millennium kingdom here on earth, where he will rule and reign. And we all will be here on the earth, uh, will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, during this uh, millennium rule, we know that Satan will be bound. Uh, Satan, Antichrist, uh, uh, will be thrown into uh, uh, hell for a, a period. And after the thousand-year uh, rule, you know, will be uh, will be they will be released again, and uh, will they will continue tempting those who have been living in the. A millennium kingdom for a thousand years and some of them who have lived in the thousand year period uh, with Christ uh, who have seen his reign, the beauty, his the glorious uh, reign of Christ will yield into temptation again and finally there will be the uh, great white throne judgment after that where uh, you know uh, those who uh, put their faith in God, who those who trusted in him uh, will live with him eternally in heaven and uh, those who do not will be uh, thrown into the hell of uh, into hell okay so revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 4 can somebody read that please revelation 20 verse 1 to 4 then i saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand he laid hold on the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand, thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nation no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw, okay, man, till three or four. Yes. Okay. Four. Till was four. Okay. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them and them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and ring with Christ for a thousand years. Thank you. So uh, that's basically just in very, very brief about uh, uh, the end time events or um, the promise, uh, his promise return. Okay, uh, but we will be, you will be doing uh, a more detailed study about this uh, in the course, the end time, uh, end times, and um, we will also be studying a little more about this in the doctrinal uh, foundation. Okay, so any uh, questions, any doubts on this chapter? It's very brief, though. Basically, it's uh, Christ has ascended. Uh, he will uh, again come back in the same way we saw him go into heaven. Um, uh, we know that there is going to be, uh, that's called the rapture, when, we, when Christ will come in the clouds and those of us who are alive, who know him, will be caught up in the air. Those of them who are dead uh, will resurrect, will also be caught up in the air with him. And then after that is... Um, the tribulation period that happens, um, which is for uh, seven years, the first half of the tribulation, uh, which is basically the coming of the Antichrist um, and, uh, you know, um, the false prophets that will arise 
uh, that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 11. So approximately during that time, uh, another man will come up in the fr forefront as a great spiritual leader, somebody who is respected, uh, admired by everyone. And um, we see that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the second half of the tribulation, he will be revealed as the false prophet. And it's, this is what is spoken about him in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And then shortly after the Antichrist and the false prophet come to power on the earth, um, you know, uh, uh, in heaven, uh, Jesus Christ will take the scroll that is in the hands uh, and begin in the hand of God Almighty. We, uh, we read this in Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, uh, where the seals will be opened, uh, the opening of the seals. And, um, you know, uh, the first four seals will be opened and uh, God's judgment will be unleashed on the earth and it will bring about the large scale destruction and uh, uh, death. Okay, we read about this in Revelation chapter six, uh, seven, verse seven and eight. Um, and uh, the remaining two seals, uh, only the first four will be open in the first half of the tribulation. The second half of the tribulation, there will be uh, the other two seals that will be opened. Uh, during the first uh, half of the tribulation, there will also be the two witnesses. Uh, so while the four uh, seals are being unleashed upon the earth, uh, God will simultaneously raise up two witnesses in Jerusalem uh, to deliver people from the judgment um, uh, so we see that the two, mission of these two main witnesses is to inform people uh, that the judgments taking place are directly from God. And, uh, you know, anyone who chooses to follow Jesus will be saved from a greater judgment in hell. And uh, these two witnesses will perform extraordinary miracles uh, to prove that they are sent uh, from God. Uh, um, and we see that uh, because of their witnesses, many Jews and Gentiles will accept Jesus as their uh, Lord and Savior during the tribulation, those who are left behind. We read about this in Revelation chapter 11, verses 5 uh, to 6. And then we see that the persecution of the Christians will happen, those who are left behind, uh, you know, um, Antichrist will use his influence to persecute the Christians, their faith, uh, and there will be intense uh, persecution that they will face. They will die horrible deaths. Uh, again, this is written in Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Uh, then the two martyrs, the two witnesses will be, uh, sorry, two witnesses will be martyred. Uh, their bodies will be left uh, uh, dead in the streets of Jerusalem. Um, uh, you know, uh, so we see that, um, uh, you know, they will just be left uh, dead over there. Uh, so, but however, after the three and a half days, uh, after three and a half days, uh, they will, the breath of life from God will enter them. They will stand on their feet and they will cause uh, terror to those who are seeing it. Uh, and then there'll be a loud voice from heaven, which will say, come up here and there will be, uh, they will go up to heaven in a cloud uh, and all their enemies who, uh, you know, martyr them will look upon them uh, uh, in awe and they'll be really amazed and stunned. And we read about this in Revelation chapter 11, verses 11 and uh, 12. Then there'll be an earthquake in Jerusalem. Uh, then Satan uh, will be thrown down to the earth. Then the second half of the tribulation, which will happen, which... Um, uh, will be opening of the the fifth and the sixth seal, uh, and there will be you know mass devastation that will be happening on the earth, uh, earthquakes that will happen, um, uh, and um, you know many people will be killed because of this, and they will realize that it's God's judgment upon them. Um, the world leaders will be filled with fear. They will long to escape uh, the judgment of uh, God. And then we see that Christ, Satan himself will indwell in Antichrist. Uh, and Antichrist will destroy, uh, uh, you know, uh, destroy Babylon the Great. Uh, that's 
spoken about in Revelation chapter 18, verse 10. Um, but if you really see this, you know, uh, uh, all the nations, the powerful nations, will fully cooperate with Antichrist, supporting him, his world government. Um, uh, so now, since Satan has possessed Antichrist, he will declare war against uh, uh, this nation, which is symbolically referring to the Babylon in the, ba in the Bible, and will be successful in destroying it. Um, and we know that Antichrist will declare himself as uh, uh, God. Uh, you know, he will overtake uh, the Jerusalem temple, uh, which by this time will be rebuilt in the same format that God had given uh, David and Solomon had built it. Uh, and his, so the world head headquarters will move, uh, will now shift to uh, Jerusalem. And... Um, uh, we see that the idol of Antichrist will be created. He'll desecrate the, the temple, the altar, the sacrifices. There will be the mark of the beast. Um, uh, and then, you know, um, uh, you know, putting on the mark of the beast on the forehead. Then we see the opening of the seventh seal uh, and the seven trumpet uh, judgments. Uh, the seven bowls of uh, plague when the seven trumpet is sounded, um, then uh, Antichrist will initiate his plan for war against uh, God. And then there will be pre preparations for the war at Armageddon. Uh, and then we see the battle of Armageddon, the second coming of uh, Jesus. Uh, and uh, Satan, of course, will be defeated, and uh, he, uh, Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet will be thrown into uh, hell, where they will be there for a short time. We read this in Revelation chapter 20, verses 22 and 3. Um, and all the unbelievers who participated in the battle of Armageddon will be killed and sent to hell. And then we see that, uh, you know, the a thousand year millennium kingdom uh, will be established here on earth where Christ himself will rule. And after the thousand year uh, millennium kingdom, we see that Satan uh, uh, will be released from, um, uh, uh, you know, from the, from hell and he will deceive many again. And then there will be the final, uh, the battle of Gog and Magog, the final judgment of Satan. Uh, heaven and earth will vanish and then we'll have the great white throne judgment and a new beginning. So that's just basically very uh, briefly uh, that I've just uh, gone through because you will be learning in detail about the end time events. But if you want me to explain anything, then I could uh, do that. Um, can you please explain uh, Revelation chapter 20 verses 4 to 7 when thousand year affects me? Yeah, that's a that's a very good um, uh, uh, question. Uh, so uh, Zilatoli's uh, question is, um, uh, you know, saying that uh, uh, can you please explain Revelation chapter twenty verses was four and verse seven, right? Zilatoli. Yeah, uh, verse seven actually. Okay. Verse 7, when the thousand years have expired or has ended, Satan will be released from his uh, prison. I was just thinking, why would God release Satan um, again? So uh, we see that uh, in the thousand year uh, millennium kingdom, only believers will be part of that uh, 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 you know, millennium kingdom where uh, they will experience um, you know, uh, the uh, uh, you know they will experience uh, the rule and the reign of God, and uh, during that time, uh, children uh, will be born, um, and children will have the privilege of being born into a perfect world uh, where they will not know suffering or poverty. Everything will be available in abundance for them. Uh, but in spite of uh, the perfection in their lives, in spite of uh, you know the perfect loving rule of Christ, we see see that, uh, you know, they will find themselves tempted by their sinful nature that is inside them because, you know, they are, uh, you know, still human, they're born in sin. Um, uh, 
uh, but we know that during the thousand year period, you know, these uh, children who are born, the youngsters, millions of them who are born, uh, will not commit any sinful deed in spite of their uh, sinful nature that is in them. Uh, uh, the two reasons uh, why this will happen. The, uh, the first one is because uh, God will not permit uh, any sin, absolutely no sin, no disobedience. Uh, like we read in Revelation chapter 19, verse 15, he's, it says that he will rule them with an iron scepter, with an iron hand. Uh, you know, there will be perfect obedience. Um and also they will not, uh, uh, you know, give into the sinful nature, will, will not yield into temptation because Satan is lying bound in the abyss uh, and there won't be anyone to uh, deliberately tempt them uh, to sin against uh, God. But we see that as soon as uh, Satan emerges from the abyss, uh, he will, you know, begin his job of deceiving uh, the people once again, um, so at this time, the whole new generations that are born during the millennium, uh, you know, will have an opportunity to prove their loyalty to um, uh, to Christ. But those who give in to Satan very sadly will fall into his trap. Um, uh, so, you know... Um, uh, just uh, a time where, uh, you know, God also wants to, uh, to uh, it's like a part, it's so to say not in a very negative way, but God will allow this as a final proof uh, that the heart of man uh, is desperately wicked and can be changed only by God's grace. Um, you know, so people who have been living in the perfect environment, a perfect government of God's son, uh, they will rebel against their king. It will show that uh, they obey God during the millennium because they did not have any choice. But when they have a choice, are they really uh, able to prove their loyalty to um, uh, Christ? Okay, and so uh, we see that Satan will lead many uh, in his final attempt to rebel against God. Uh, but during this uh, last uh, stage uh, or this last rebellion, it really will show who is totally loyal to God, who is totally faithful to him and uh, those who are uh, honestly seeking him and wanting to follow him compared to those who uh, just followed him because of the iron rule or the iron scepter uh, and they had to obey. There's no way they could disobey. And so God wants to know who are totally him, who belong to him and uh, who are loyal to him. Yes. And also to show that man's heart is utterly wicked and they can only be saved by the grace of God. It's a good question. Uh, but uh, this is a, a answer which can be a little hard for all each of us to uh, digest. But that's how God has ordained it in his sovereignty, in his plan, in his will. Thank you for that uh, observation and questions, Ilatoli. Very good question. Anyone has any other questions? So just basically briefly went through um, what is going to happen uh, at the end time events. It's not a detailed study. Anyone has any questions, any doubts? No questions? Okay. So all of you are going are happy that you all will be raptured, that we all will be raptured. We don't have to go through the seven-year tribulation period, which is going to be really terrible is not the word to use. Uh, I mean, it's, it's more uh, larger than that word terrible. And we'll also be part of the millennium um, kingdom of God where we will uh, live under his perfect reign, his perfect rule. Okay, there are no more quest no questions in the end times. Okay, if there's no questions, then uh, we we'll just fix a date for our uh, uh, 
second uh, assessment, which will be chapters with the first assessment, we did chapters one to four, that is the pre-existence of Christ's equality with the Father and the Spirit, Holy Spirit, the role in his, uh, sorry, Christ's role in creation and uh, his promise of his coming again. Uh, so the second assessment will have chapters five, uh, six, seven, and eight, which is understanding the incarnation, the humanity of Christ, the purpose of the incarnation, and the virginal conception. Okay. Um, and then we will do uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, and the third assessment. So is that okay? Would you want to have uh, these chapters, 5 to 8? Is that fine? Yes, ma'am. So, okay, four chapters. Okay, which is uh, the date that we can have it? Would March 21st or 28th be fine? for the second assessment. March 28th is fine for me. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, Subhashis. 28th uh, sounds good. Okay, yeah, then 28th sounds good. We'll have it on uh, the 28th. Okay, on the 28th, you'll have uh, chapters 5 to 8. Uh, uh, next, sorry. sorry, success. It's okay by me. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, next class will be uh, the last class, which is uh, chapter 13, the Son of God, which is also very, uh, you know, uh, very short uh, notes on that. Uh, so, if you have any questions or doubts, even as you're going through uh, these chapters that you went through for the test, one chapters one to four or chapters five to eight, you can raise any questions uh, and then we can answer that. Otherwise, uh, uh, next Monday will be our last class for this course. Okay. Uh, do you think it was, uh, do you think you want me to redo any chapters, re-explain any chapters? Uh, you can tell me now. We still have a couple more minutes before this uh, class ends. Any chapter that you want me to, you know, uh, teach again? Anyone? I hope I was not too fast in going through the chapters. Was it okay? Was it fine? Can I have some feedback, please? It was okay, ma'am. It was okay? It's okay? Uh, it was good, Pastor. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, feedback. Any chapters you want me to go through, you can uh, still let me know. Uh, you can post it on the stream page. Uh, and we can do that again. Uh, if you want a more personal study, then that's also fine because uh, all of you don't have to join class. Those of you who want to join those classes, we can still redo some of the chapters that some of you want uh, 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 an explanation, are interested in knowing uh, more, you can still do that, okay? Okay, uh, then we'll have our... Um, uh, uh, second assessment, chapters 5 to chapter 8 on uh, the 28th of this month. And then we'll have, uh, uh, next week we might we can decide for uh, the final assessment where we'll have chapters uh, 9 to 13. 9 to 13 will be very short because only basically 9, 10, and 11 have uh, 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 content for it, the 12 and 13, very little content. Okay. Okay, thank you all for joining uh, class today. Uh, have a good day and a blessed week ahead, and I'll see you on uh, Wednesday for your doctrinal foundations. I hope all of you were okay with the, the doctrinal foundation assessment, were able to access it, uh, had any issues? I haven't assessed it. Okay, uh, today, uh, 5 o'clock, IST is uh, the deadline. Uh, you can, it's accessible now. 
you have any issues, you can just, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, post your message on the stream page and I'll help you. Okay, okay. I will do that. Yeah. Is we, we are 6 a.m. here, maybe before 10 a.m. I'll finish up. Okay. Thank you, success. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, I don't know every when we check it and upload it, it's all fine. But once it's uploaded, I don't know how, uh, you know, the button for, um, uh, you know, restricted users uh, gets on, which is uh, uh, quite strange that happens to your class. But when I post it for uh, the final year students uh, for their assessment, it works perfectly. But so we just had to turn that off. And I think all of you were able to ac uh, access the form after that. OK, thank you all for joining class. Uh, have a good day and a good week ahead. And I'll see you on uh, Wednesday. Don't forget to pull, uh, you know, submit your assessment. Uh, the deadline is uh, 5 o'clock today. OK, thank you all. Uh, Bye. Sorry, oh, 5 o'clock. What's time in your, your nation, in your country? Because uh it's like i said this is 6 a.m so that i won't be late in submission no you won't be late because you're going to do it in uh, uh uh within three to four hours you have more than that now we are uh 10 36 a.m for okay. us yeah okay so you have more hours yeah all right thank you okay okay thank you everyone bye